Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sew Boutique, and today we are going to sew a undercover sewing machine cover. The pattern is by Annie Patterns. I really loved making this pattern. I've really wanted to improve the look of my sewing area <laughs> and kind of replace the plastic sewing machine cover with something with a little bit more style and function um, that goes along with having a custom sewing machine cover. And I decided to select fabrics that matched some of the other projects that I've made by Annie. This is Take a Stand, and it's a tool bag and project bag that you can take along with you, as well as the Running with Scissors, which has many compartments for storing all of your tools that you run from place to place with. And I'm gonna start using this actually, because I do a lot of sewing here in the office, and then I take stuff home at night to work on, or I do a lot of things at home, and then I bring them here. And so I'm always moving, um, fabric and tools and projects and stuff like that and I really as you can see this is my color family um, I really love working with these colors and and so I'm really happy building up the tools that I'm going to use as I sew um, in my sewing space so today I want to take you through the steps needed to create this undercover sewing machine cover and it took more than a day, just want you to know that, <laughs> for several reasons. One, you have to quilt fabric. You have to cut out all of the pattern pieces and label all of those pieces. And then you have to start sewing each thing together. And it does take a little bit of time to create the Biani, Biani patterns. And even though I think this took me a day and a half, to do. Um, we want to keep it fun and it's really fun to learn and remember each one of the techniques that she has that you can use throughout each one of her projects. So let's talk a little bit about the undercover pattern. Not all of our sewing machine are the same size. None of them are. Well, maybe there are three different sizes or more, but in this pattern, we start with three separate sizes, a small, a medium and a large. And basically the difference between them is a little bit more height and a little bit more width. You can also take this pattern and follow the steps to create a custom sewing machine cover to match your sewing machine if it isn't one of these. You can get really close and then adjust your sizing to fit your sewing machine cover or your sewing machine. I made, just for reference, through, and you'll hear this throughout this video, I made a medium size. I have kind of a mid-size Juki, and I'm just gonna lift this up so you can see um, the size of this. And I did do a little bit of measuring on the Janome Gem that I have at home. That fits the small really well. And so if you have a larger uh, Juki, Bernina, um, maybe the large size will fit as well. But for the medium size, I needed to have, and let's go through the component list, a yard and a half of the main fabric and the lining, three-fourths of a yard of the coordinate. And that is really, on this particular project, used for a lot of binding and some of the lining for the flaps here, and the coordinating fabric to give it a little style on the front of the cover. I also used soft and stable when I quilted up my fabric. I did use my professional long arm to quilt up a huge piece of fabric because I do more than one project at a time, as you can see. Um, it also requires a zipper, mesh for a side pocket and matching fold over elastic and then a snap set, the invisible snap set that Annie um, developed is really perfect for this project. 
So you really don't need a lot of extra components. You also need, let me, one more thing, uh, interfacing for some of the stabilizing on the flaps and the coordinated accents here. So you don't need a lot of things for this particular project. In the pattern, um, as with all patterns for by Annie, she'll take you through the tools you need, how to lay out your fabric, how to quilt your fabric, how much fabric should be quilted, and then from the quilted fabric and the coordinate, all of the measurements to cut out your pieces for the project. I'm not gonna take you through each one of those steps, but I am gonna say this. I did, um, I did a couple of things that are a little step different. I use more than one thread. I am somebody who likes to match her thread to the task at hand. So wherever there's blue fabric, I use a blue thread. Wherever there was a lighter fabric, I used white or tan to quilt this fabric and to also do any of the edge stitching as well. So I always work with more than one um, thread color simply because I like to hide my threads. And one tip to always remember when you're reading through the first setup and, and getting organized section is to, when you're cutting out your quilted pieces, make sure that you edge stitch around every single one of those pieces, pieces an eighth of an inch away using your normal stitch width and stitch length. Um, it really secures the edges and when you're working with more than one quilted thickness of fabric, if you have those stitch lines already in your fabric, it makes it so much easier to add the extra layers and to stitch around them because it already knows where it's going. So remember those steps and it'll really make working with the multiple layers of quilted fabric and the binding so much easier. The other thing I wanted to share with you is um, always, I shouldn't say always, my recommendation is to use a very strong top stitch needle, size 14. And um, I think that's a 9014. Um, just because of its strength and because you are working with multiple layers of fabric plus stabilizer inside, um, it is the perfect uh, needle size that I have found and I did make this using this Juki. Um, and so the strength of it was great and um, it really goes through the layers perfectly. I did pre-wash my fabric before quilting it and before cutting out the coordinate, coordinating fabric. Um, it's just something I always do to remove any excess dyes and wax from the batik. I want to make it as clean and clear as possible. So I don't think there's anything else I wanted to share about the basic setups, but go through the pattern and follow the instructions for quilting your fabric, for cutting out all the pattern pieces from the quilted fabric as well as the coordinate. Follow the instructions to cut your bias binding and to stitch that together. There are two different widths of bias binding on this particular project. One is two inches and one is two and a quarter. So make sure you, you um, plan for the right number of strips for each one of those. Set those aside. Use your labels. The one thing that you will see me do in every one of these is I use that last page that gives you labels, cut out your labels, use them every single time, um, mark all of your pattern pieces to stay organized, and this becomes a really, really simple project. I think the first thing we are going to do in this pattern is to make the pockets. And so without further ado, let's get started on creating our undercover sewing machine cover. Actually, one more thing before we get started. I wanted to make sure that I go through and describe this cover to you so you know all the different components and what you're going to see as I share with you the making of each component. So this has a front this is what we're calling the front of the sewing machine cover, and it has a zipper opening, which will be a pocket 
to store all of your goodies in. It has a back, of course, and the options in this pattern, there are two options and I didn't even realize that until I read the pattern entirely. There's a side pocket, you see this side pocket here, where you can slide in, um, whether it be a template, tools, a book, anything that you want access to that can just slide in the side, or you can make this as a top open pocket as well. I decided to use the side simply because anytime I make something that has a top open, I put too much stuff in it. <laughs> and so it ends up getting way too wide. So I decided that I really liked the concept of the side opening here. Then one side of the cover has a mesh bag, which is intended for, well, can be for anything, but I'm going to use it for my foot feed put the cable in here and that, and it'll hold it all nice right there. Because I think that's the spot for something that has a little bit more thickness to it. And that's perfect for that. The other side has another zipper pocket. So you can put additional feet, you can put thread if you're not using another tool bag of some kind, um, but you can put anything in here, needles, uh, pins, whatever it happens to be for your sewing project and um, hold that because it has a zipper. And then the top, I'm going to tip this forward a little bit. The top is simply a flap, which we call the back flap here, and a front flap there that opens to the center. And it's perfect for picking up your handle of your sewing machine without having to lift off this beautiful cover. And this, you can adjust the size to be the opening that works for your specific sewing machine cover or your sewing machine as well, okay? But the snaps are within here and make it very easy to always have this closed. So this is the sewing machine cover that you're making, the inside does not have any pockets or anything else in it. It's simply a cover. Get this on here. Now let's, let's get, now let's get started. This is pocket A and pocket A is on the outside of the sewing machine cover and it's perfect for storing any of your manuals or um, feet or anything that you want to store on the actual sewing machine cover. Um, so what we're going to do here is we have pocket A1, pocket A2, both of these are the quilted fabric. We're also going to insert a zipper and this is a coordinating fabric. Now that's optional. It's always optional on the outside because what it really is, it's not a functional piece, it's just a decorative piece. So the first thing we're going to do with pocket A is measure in from the top edge of the bottom pocket here, which is A2. We're going to use a pencil or marker, however you wanna mark it, but we're gonna mark two and a half inches down I guess I should take these off, huh? Remember to save your little sheets here for the next time you make one of these. And then we're gonna take our coordinating fabric and position it right along that edge. Stitch a quarter inch away from this coordinating fabric. We're going to turn this up and it will be level and even with the top of this pocket. So really what we're doing is we're simply adding a decorative element to this edge. So if you have a ribbon or something else that you'd like to use right here to add your own style to your pocket, definitely do that. So once this is stitched here, it's time to add the zipper and um, I'm gonna put the zipper, kind of follow the instructions on the pattern, which is to put the zipper pull over on the left-hand side 
and just get it out of the way so that we can stitch a quarter inch away from the edge, adding this zipper to the bottom portion of the pocket. Then we'll turn this up and we're gonna finger press and then top stitch along that edge. And that just really secures the zipper onto this particular pocket edge. Then we'll line up the top portion of pocket A, which is A1, with the bottom here along the other zipper side, right sides together, stitch your quarter inch away, flip this back over, we're going to hand press it down and then top stitch. And we'll end up with an amazingly pretty pocket that's going to go on the outside of the sewing machine cover. So here is pocket A and everything is sewn together. And I will tell you, um, I am working with, as you probably saw, some high contrast between the background, the main fabric and the accents. And so I have been doing a lot of thread changing, <laughs> just so that you know, um, I match the thread to, to, to actually match the fabric that I'm sewing on. So this is a dark blue thread top stitching, and this is, um, actually it's a white, it's almost a white. It's number 401 of the So Fine um, by Superior Threads. And um, I used that also when I quilted the fabric. Um, you don't have to do that. I just like matching everything and um, making sure that the threads are, I guess, as straight as possible, but then also if they match more, they're hidden. So this is pocket A, and so now we have our zipper in the middle, and I, I did need to trim it a little bit. It was a little too long or high here, and so I did trim the bottom and then stitched the edge to make sure that that was closed. Um, the next pocket is pocket B, and I'm going to slide this one out of the way. Now, last night I did um, finish pocket B. This is the pocket. Let me show you on here. This is the pocket. Actually, I'm going to take this plastic off. And I have other pictures of another sample that was done with our fabric as well. I could show you that too. But pocket B is the back pocket that is, you have an option on this pattern. Um, it's shown here where you can slide, whether a manual or a um, ruler or anything right in this pocket. But you also have the option of making this pocket open across the top. So if you'd rather have something go down the top of your uh, sewing machine cover, that's your option. I made the side opening and not the top opening. So um, I have a tendency of putting stuff in pockets and they end up forcing themselves more and more and more open. <laughs> so I decided that I really like this concept of the side pocket. And all this pocket is, is you take your um, binding and finish off the edge of the pocket. That's all it is. And make sure that the finished measurements are as described in the pattern. So that's that one. And then there's a, po a pocket C. Pocket C, I also did last night. And again, it's pretty simple, much like A where it's just a little bit different from A, but basically pocket C is a side pocket. This pocket is a zipper opening and it will be, I don't know if you can see it on here, but it is right along this edge of the bag. And it just simply has a binding running across one edge of the zipper. And then you finish it off as well with a zipper on your quilted fabric. And when I tip this over, I did the same thing again. I changed my thread so that this thread matched here. Um, so I do end up putting white thread in my needle and dark thread in my bobbin. Um, but again, that's just me. 
you'll get to know that. <laughs> so now we're done with our pockets. We have A, we have B, which is the back pocket, and then we have our side pocket. We have one more prep to do, and that is with our mesh. So what we're going to do here, because on the other side, and I don't have a, oh yes, I do. Do you see here, let me get this up here. Do you see here where the um, presser foot your, or your foot pedal is in a mesh on the side of the bag? That is what we're going to, to make sure that we make. And so we're gonna use a combination of the mesh and the fold over elastic to finish this off and have that ready to attach to the side of the sewing machine cover. Pocket D is the mesh. Mesh with the fold over elastic on the top. And this is actually cut so that the elastic is going to stretch a little bit. It's gonna gather up just slightly for that pocket. And the easiest way that I know how to do this is, um, first of all, I ended up pressing the mesh just a little bit because when it comes in the, the package, it's folded and has these little creases in it. So take, this is perfect for clips. Take your mesh and put it against the center of this fold over elastic, fold it over and clip, okay? And then I keep working, I'm gonna pull this just slightly, holding that end, and I'm gonna clip this. I'm only doing a couple of clips just to get it started because you're really gonna work this more so on the sewing machine than you are by clipping it. But I just like to kind of see how much gathering I really need to do here in order for this to work properly. And see, it's got, it's got like an extra, about an inch in here that has to be gathered. Now I'm gonna to go to that edge, clip that, and then in the middle here, kind of pulling it apart with your fingers, clip that middle. And then we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and stitch right along this open edge here to tack down the fold over elastic. Getting this started is just a little tricky. I actually use the stiletto and I kind of grab that. I push this through a little bit so that it's past the end and drop my presser foot. I know this sounds like a little complicated, but I try to get all of that in there. And what I do then is I'll drop my needle and pull behind here, pull my threads. And what I'm going to do with this hand is pull my threads and then I'm gonna backstitch. And now I'm gonna hold my threads because that's the only thing I really have to hold on to and pull forward just slightly. See how that goes? And then just continue to stitch, because the clips are in here, continue to stitch evenly along the edge. And I am pulling slightly here. Remove that clip and just go slow. And holding it as you go. And yes, if you did notice, I changed my thread to gray. <laughs> Oof, me. Okay, here we go. And hopefully my hands are out of the way. And see, I put this one down straight like this so that I can pull it just a little bit as I finish stitching, guide it along. Now, you're gonna think I'm kind of strange here, but I'm gonna let that go, grab my stiletto, hold it with that, and then finish it off. Don't hit your needle. And this one, I'm not gonna even attempt to backstitch. Okay, lift that up, leave some threads, 
And there we have it. We have our edge, looks great. And the back looks great. Phew. <laughs> so now we're all done with the pockets and we are going to start preparing the front and back cover for the sewing machine cover. So we need our cover front and I'm making a medium one. I guess I didn't really even say that earlier, but I am making a medium one. So I'm following those measurements. So here's my front cover and set that aside. And then we need pocket A because this is going to be the front <laughs> and it's going to have this beautiful pocket on it. So we're lining up. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. So when we open up our pocket, once this is all put together, we get to see a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful inside, which is our quilted fabric. It's beautiful. So um, line this up, tops, and I just simply clip. Get my corners going here, clip, clip, just a couple places, just to make sure that nothing moves as we sew. And if you do have a, a walking foot, it might be better. You have to test out what works for you, but I simply leave my, the, my basic presser foot on my sewing machine um, and use it a good portion of the time, except for when I really need a zipper foot. Okay, so we're going to line all these up here and don't force it if it's not perfect perfect just do some trimming and make sure that everything is still in place but that you know we want to make sure that it's still that measurement and this one for me is 13 by 18 and 3 fourths so that's all I do with the clips now here's what we're going to do we are going to stitch all the way around the outside an eighth of an inch away from the edge and as you can tell Basically, we're stitching on top of what we've already done to seal the edges of our quilted fabric. You're also going to be stitching over your zipper tape. So make sure that's flat there because one of these two sides has to be open. So we're going to stitch right across there. Make sure your zipper tab is inside where you're stitching or you're not gonna have a zipper. So we wanna make sure that's inside and just continue to stitch all the way around. The next step, and I'm gonna walk you through this, is once that's done, you won't have any clips up here, but the top two corners are going to be curved. So and you see, let me show you here again. We have curved top edges of the sewing machine cover. Okay, so we want to make a little bit of a curve there and it'll make it much easier for binding as well. So we're going to take anything that's two and a half inches in circle. You're going to learn this from doing several biani patterns is you need something that measures two and a half inches. And if I, if you've watched me before, you know that the bottom of a cone of thread, and it, it's not just so fine, but the bottom of a cone of thread is two and a half inches. Perfect. So we're going to take, and I'll just unclip this here just to show you what I'm going to do. But we're going to put that in the corners. Use, it doesn't matter if you're using a pencil or a pen or if it, it um, irons off, it, it just doesn't matter because it's gonna be sealed inside. So I'm just going to take my pencil, don't you love my glamorous pencil? And draw on each of the top corners. Now what I do is I sort of line up as if this were 45 degrees here, and that's my circle. I'm I try to be consistent as possible with that circle. And that will be how I finish off the two top edges. Um, so first stitch around, come back, do your two and a half inch curve, stitch, you're gonna cut that off, and then you're gonna edge stitch to make sure that it's secure. You'll want that in a future step. And then we'll be done with the front cover and we'll move on to the back cover. The back cover is put together almost identically to the front. 
And um, so I have my the back cover here, right side up. This is pocket B. And in the pattern, there are two options for this pocket. You might have selected the top opening. I select, which is option A or one, I selected the side opening. So I'll have mine open from the side here. And that's option two. So what we're going to do is position these lining up the top, the right, and the bottom. If you're in option one, you want to line up the two sides and the bottom. And then we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around, leaving open your opening here. Then once that's done, it's time to do our curved corners. We're going to make those curved by taking our two and a half inch template, whatever you're using, take your pen, mark around it. And then what I'm going to show you what I do, I actually make my mark and then without moving off my sewing machine, I stitch an eighth of an inch on the inside of that oval. And then I come back and I cut off the oval. So that's what I do. So let's make our back cover. It's time to assemble the top flaps. So what we need for this step is both the back flap and the front flap. Now these are going to be right on the top of the sewing machine uh, cover and they have snaps, so, snow, um, sew in snaps, and you'll need two sets of those. And then we also have the coordinating fabric, which is going to be the lining on these flaps. And these have already been interfaced in a prior step, so that's ready to go. And what I wanna do before I take you step by step is lay this out because it can get a little tricky trying to figure out where these snaps go and how they're going to be positioned when it's done and on the sewing machine cover. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna set these aside for just a second. Now, the, I'm gonna take this off because I know what I'm working with here. I'm gonna flip one of the facings interface side up. I'm going to do the same thing. Take this off with the other one. Okay. And let's, let's say this is the back flap. This is the front flap. And when all said and done, the back flap will be the top flap. Okay. So that's the one that's going to be on top. When we open it up, it'll be the top flap so it comes forward. Then let's take each one of these. They're all the same measurement. I'm gonna take this and this will be the back flap. This will be the front flap here, okay? So let me position this on top of this and that's how it's going to finish when we have everything sewn together and the snaps are inside and it's edged and everything. Now it's gonna get a lot more beautiful, but so when you want to open up this flap and reach in and grab the handle on your sewing machine, you can do that, okay? So let me separate those one more time and let's grab the snaps. And I'm gonna set this back just a smidge and this one back just a smidge. Now, the snaps themselves, and Annie does a great job um, writing about this inside her pattern, but basically the snaps are being sewn to the lining, okay? So right in here on this facing is where we're gonna stitch them. So we don't see the um, stitch lines on the outside, the really, really pretty side of the sewing machine cover. And each one of the sets, they have plastic all the way around them and if you separate them each side is flat these are completely flat and that's the snap right there okay and what we want to do is I did this to organize myself is I positioned one snap over here and one snap over here and the measure follow the measurements in the pattern it will tell you and instruct you how far over to measure 
because what we're going to do is we're going to mark exactly where each snap goes, both positive and negative, so that when they do overlap, they connect. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is separate our snap. And based off your marking, and I'm just gonna lay these here gingerly, just kind of, just so you know what we're going to do. The flat side on the back side flap will be down, okay? So we're gonna do that on both of these, okay? That's gonna be down. On the other snap, which is the front of the flap, the front flap, which is the bottom flap, we want to turn this so that the flat side is up. So that will go there. And let me see, flat. This will go here. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to measure in and mark my spots for my medium sized sewing machine cover. And mine is three and a quarter inches in, and then four and a half inches in, make a mark. And then a quarter inch above my fabric edge, I'm going to make a line all the way across because we need to make sure that this plastic is above that quarter inch so that we can stitch around here and not catch that plastic. We don't need any more of that plastic when we bind the edge of this to make it all beautiful, okay? So we, we wanna make sure that that's in a quarter inch on each one of these, okay? Now, if you have a fabric glue that you love, now would be the time to use it. And this, I just had in my um, tools of trade. And once you get the positioning right and have marked your interface side of your lining, or facing, what you wanna do is use your fabric glue, add a dab to make sure that this can stay in its little spot while you go to your sewing machine and stitch around that snap a couple of times. And that'll secure it. Now what I'm going to do is change my thread to be blue because it's going to be blue on that side and you'll see it on the facing side if you, when you open up your, the top of your um, sewing machine cover to reach in, you'll see your facing. Now, do your best, go all the way around here, and it's probably going to be best to use a zipper foot or something that doesn't require you to stitch so close there, okay? So, if we were to test our little theory here, put that on top, put this on top as if it were all sewn together, and now take our back flap and set it on, <laughs> it snapped. On the front flap, it snaps and it's in place and it will work beautifully, okay? So now let me, let me peel these off, there we go. Okay, so now that was the summary and overview. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is again, measure and mark, okay? your measurements in from the sides and up from the bottom on both the back and the front. Affix your snaps, flat side down on the back side, flat side up on the front side. And then we're going to stitch all the way around to secure both of these together. Then we're going to take our little two and a half inch circle and we're going to curve. We're gonna add a curve to each one of the sides of our flaps. And then we're going to add our binding all the way around the front, leaving this edge, the flat edge, without the snaps, furthest away from the snaps, that will be left alone because that is going to be sewn to the front and the back of our sewing machine cover. Okay, I'm going to get all this stuff done and show you what it looks like when we're done.
I want to show you how I do the binding on this flap and it is again the back flap it's curved around two front edges and um, so what we do is I've taken the binding and this was a two inch strip of bias binding that we cut and um, we stitch it to the back a quarter inch away from the edge so I'm gonna quickly do that and I have to tell you that I do use the stiletto. Um, so if you do have kind of a pointy tool of some kind that's not a stiletto, definitely have that in hand. And I have my little markings where I know where a quarter inch is. And so I just start sewing and I'm a back stitcher. And I'll remove pins as I go and then I'm gonna as I get to the corner here, I start to do a little bit of stretching. Not too much, because my goal is to turn this without um, pulling the, the binding too hard, but yet it's a bias binding so that it does stretch nicely as we curve around that corner. Just take your time and patience and um, pull it just a little bit, but you're holding it in place with the stiletto or your sharp tool instead of your finger um, because that gets really difficult to do. So let's pull it around to the flat front edge here and then just continue stitching. Now right underneath here is the snap. Keep going all the way along here. Okay, now we're at the other curve. And always know where you're at and kind of know exactly where your quarter inch is on your foot too. Um, you might be using a quarter inch foot so that the measurement is right there. Um, I am not. I'm just using my regular, regular sewing foot here and kind of judging where the quarter inch is. You know, you sew quarter inches or half inches or five eighths of an inch enough, you kind of know where they are on your sewing machine because when you're on a curve like this that's my quarter inch mark not that so <laughs> just know where you're following and um, on your foot there turn it around and then we'll finish to the end and again I backstitch okay We're going to trim this off, even with the, the flap there, and then we'll get rid of this thread as well. There we go. And now what we're going to do is before, before I actually start sewing the binding down, what I do is I always like to see how my corners turned out. You know, is it a nice curve? Because you do have a minute here to, um, that one looks actually very nice. You can fix it if you, you think you don't like how it turns, okay? So flip it around and then pull the binding around to the front and use your finger to kind of go inside there to make it really flat. Remember, it's bias binding. So it's going to flex with you, okay? Around that corner, pull it around. This just kind of finger presses it as you go. And again here, run your finger through here, lay it flat over, 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 okay? And this I think will turn out really nice. So now it's time to top stitch. So I start by, you know how you, let me show you something here if you can see it. But you see how the back 
is folded. I try to make sure that they're relatively equal to the best of my ability. <laughs> right there. And then I pull my thread around to the back. And like I was doing earlier, I, I push the end past my needle and backstitch. It's just what I do. And then I run this right along my presser foot right here. And the needle is in far enough so that it's gonna give me a really nice stitch. So let's drop the needle and then I'm gonna backstitch. more and then I'm gonna pull forward holding that thread until we get going okay and now just ease this around kind of slowly you're going through a lot of layers so just ease it around and take your time and you see how nice and flat this is here I barely even have to use the stiletto but I'm gonna follow it around Try to keep it as nice and even as possible. Okay, there we go. Okay, now you'll see that some of this is open. And so that's why I wanna put this stiletto right in there, follow it along. Okay, the, this is the top flap, the back piece, and the front piece. So when we, they're all bound and ready to go. So let's line these up and they snap together all by themselves. So great. Um, the first thing that we need to do though here is, we're not quite done. We need to make sure that this measures the right measurement for the size sewing machine cover that we're making. Um, I'm making a medium, so the measurement here needs to be eight and a half from top to bottom, and then it needs to be 15 and a half this direction. This direction, it's fine. Um, I believe that that was already 15 and a half, and yeah, oh, wrong way. What am I doing here? There we go. Yes. And um, this direction needs to be eight and a half. So if you have to trim it, which I did do, I have already trimmed this down. I had to trim from this edge and this edge, making sure that the flap remains centered. And then once I cut those, I actually went back and top stitched this one more time just to make sure that this edge stays sealed. We always wanna keep each edge sealed. Then we need to make sure that we mark our centers, much like we did on the front and back pieces. We wanna make sure of where the center is. So this piece is all ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna start working on the left side strip. So the left side, we need to have our left side quilted main fabric, pocket C, and then we need a little bit of binding as well. And so this is the, um, we cut two of these, two inches by eight and a half inches, and we're gonna use one of them here. I'm gonna leave this together so I don't lose it. But the first thing we're going to do I'm gonna set this aside because I know this is gonna be the left side, is we need to do a little bit of measuring before we add our binding. 
we need to measure down from the top and mark with a fabric pencil this time, not a pen, <laughs> um, an inch and a half from the top. This is gonna join with the top flap that we have here. So now what we're doing is we're building the left side, okay, going down as this sewing machine cover is going to stand. So let's mark this an inch and a half down from the top. I th even though this is a white pencil, I will be able to see where that line is well enough, okay? Because I don't plan on using an iron here anytime soon. But the first thing we're going to do is bind the top edge. So I'm gonna fold this in half here. I'm gonna flip this around and just pin this binding in place for now so you see what I'm going to do. Actually, I can clip it. But this will go right on the edge here. So we're going to stitch our binding down on the back side, a quarter inch away from the edge of our fabric. Then we're going to flip it around and top stitch it like we've been doing all along here to finish that edge. Then we're going to take our pocket, pocket C, and place that right on top of this side panel. There are measurements also for how high we want to put this pocket. And um, for a medium, it's nine and a quarter, and I think mine is a little high, and so I am gonna move this down just a little bit. Now remember, this is the left side. I'm gonna slide this over for a minute because the front of our sewing machine cover also has a zipper on it. And I just wanted to point this out and I'm gonna lay these a little unevenly here, but this is going to match up here with at a corner, okay? And just know that this is not supposed to line up. These are not supposed to line up, okay? They're going to be off-center just a little bit and it'll look beautiful. So I'm gonna move that there just so that they, you don't want to have a lot of bulk in here when we're sewing these two edges together. Having a zipper on top of a zipper um, would be very hard to stitch through and look very awkward. So we're not gonna do that. It's gonna be um, stagger just a little bit and that's fine. I just wanted to show you that. So we'll, we'll add this here. Now to stitch this pocket down, we don't have a pocket here. We have a pocket with a zipper. So move your zipper pull inside and then starting on the left side here, we're going to stitch a top stitch all the way along that edge of that binding, down, over, and back up again. And that will secure this pocket, pocket C, to the left side panel. And then we'll be ready to start on the right side strip. Next is the right side strip. And that includes our main fabric, the binding that we're going to put across the top, and our mesh bag portion. And so with those three things, what we're going to do is this. We're going to do a couple measuring uh, measurements first. And that is just like the other side, we're going to measure down an inch and a half from the top edge. We're going to mark that with a fabric pencil, not a pen, because <laughs> this, is, this one's going to be visible again. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is add this binding to the top. I'm gonna to flip this over. And as usual, we bind the back and then we bring it around to the front and top stitch it. You're getting used to that, aren't you? Okay. So we'll do that. Then down here, we also need to measure to position 
our mesh storage bag. So follow the instructions with the different measurements, but I am again doing a medium. And so I need to measure nine inches up from the bottom. So I'll make a mark there on both sides, both long sides, I should say. And then I'm gonna position this. Now there's gonna be some fullness here. So I'm gonna put that right on the edge and put a clip right on the edge there with a clip. And we're gonna run our sewing machine stitch all the way down and around here and here. And then slightly, as you go through here, gather this up, gather the bottom up just a little bit, okay, when you're stitching it. I'm actually gonna put some pins in here so that it will naturally tuck. Now you could do pleats if you want. If you're a pleat person, just put two or three in the bottom and that will secure it as well. I know I'm going to be putting my um, foot feet in here every single time I, I use this. So I know that that is going to be just enough fullness there and here for my foot feed. Okay, so work this along the bottom. Okay, so now a quarter inch, do not stitch here, but a quarter inch, not a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch all the way around, attaching the mesh to our main right side, and then we'll trim anything that's excess and we'll be set to go to assemble the whole top strip cover that keeps the sewing machine cover together. We are getting there. So now it's time to create the entire top and sides of the sewing machine cover. So we have our um, top flaps. Again, the back flap is on top. It's great that the snaps are there because it keeps everything together. And the next thing we're going to do is position the flaps on top of this uh, left side panel. And remember the inch and a half down that we did a marking? We want to align those flaps right on top of that line, okay? And I'm going to clip them in place. Actually, I'm gonna put two clips on each side and I'm gonna show you in a minute why. Okay, these line up really nicely. And our goal is to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge to secure and attach the flap to the side over here. And we're gonna do that right along this inch and a half overlapping um, fabric here. But before we do that, I also want to do the same thing to the right side, the right pocket that has the mesh on it. And again, I'm going to grab a couple of clips. And we will secure them here, right along that edge, an eighth of an inch away we're trying to hide all of our stitching because that's going to be inside the binding once we get our binding on. But first, I want to make sure that everything lines up all the way across this centerpiece because what's going to happen is this is going to become the stand of our cover, okay? And I also want to make sure that when I fold this in half and do it gently, so that these clips don't move. I wanna fold this in half here with this flat edge touching and make sure 
that our pins are still right in the center here. And they are. So everything seems to be matching up really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge on all four points here. And what I'm trying to do is simply attach the flap center to the left side and the right side of our cover. I have to say that my table's not big enough to show you this whole thing, but here is the center of the uh, sewing machine cover. This is the front here. And what I'm doing is I'm just lining these up where we placed our pins here. And remember that the back flap is the top flap. So then the back piece goes here and I have the opening on I guess if I'm facing the back, it will be on the left side, but right now it's on the right side. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm gonna set this aside. This is the, the back. And what we wanna do is stitch all the way around here, attaching the center to the front. Now we're gonna do this by matching our pins. Actually, before I start that, what I want to make sure is that you take your zipper pull here, bring it towards the center, okay? Because we want it out of the way of either side over here um, because that's where we're going to be stitching our fronts and backs to the center piece. And then over here, what I've also done on the mesh is I've taken some pins, pulled the excess mesh in, into the center here, and just we got to keep it away from the edge because we want to make sure that no puckering happens here and that this becomes just a nice flat edge so we've added some pins there so with lining sides together here that's what we're going to do lining sides together now i'm going to flip it this way instead for one reason um annie recommends but i'm gonna start pinning here I should say clipping. I'm going to start clipping. I like to use clips simply because of the bulk with all of these layers. So I'm going to clip it right there and I'm not removing those pins so fast. So I'm going to clip that. I'm going to put a clip here just to kind of get it started here because what we're doing, normally you would be stitching right sides together. We're not doing that here. We're stitching wrong sides together or lining sides together, I should say, because we're gonna bind this edge with our bias binding, finishing the edge on the top of the sewing machine cover, not on the inside, okay? Which is really very cool. So I'm going to just line these up and get this started here now. On the back side of this as well, we've got another zipper. So let's pull that in. We want to get that out of the way. Nothing worse than stitching over a zipper pull. Um, not that I've done that, I have not, but that is probably very detrimental to your sewing machine. Okay, so I'm just going to get this started here and we're going to sew with the front against the sewing machine and the sewing machine table so that we can manipulate this portion of the cover easier. So when we're going around the curve here, it'll be a lot easier for us to move this fabric than it would be to try to bend that up, okay? So we're gonna get started here and stitch a quarter of an inch away. Now we're doing our seam here. So a quarter of an inch away from the edge, all the way around here. And I'm just gonna lightly also put some, some clips on this side. I shouldn't probably start from the back because I wanna make sure that this curve has enough tightness to it as well. We don't want any gathers in there. We just want it to be smooth. And that's why we mark our center so that we can work our way 
around this corner without having any gathering. So I typically take the clips out when I'm stitching here anyway and use the stiletto to work its way around. So if you end up pushing the fabric down, which sometimes happens when you've got this many layers underneath your presser foot, it's going to continue to push, push, push all the way down to the end. And if it becomes uneven for any reason, we'll trim it, um, but it should fit very nicely. And if you want to clip, use a clip on the bottom here too, keeping those aligned so that nothing moves. Okay, so that we've got our zipper pulls in the middle. We've got the mesh pinned here. So now we can stitch a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, so here is the first side sewn. So that's the front and our flaps. And now we get to line up the back. Let me flip this up the other way. So now this is the back side, okay? And we're gonna lay that down there and we're gonna match up the lining to the lining right at the pin here. I think I can get rid of my name tag here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're putting this thing together here. So I'm gonna put a clip right on either side of that. I really ne never remove my center pins when I'm working on a biani pattern um, for fear that if something shifts, I don't know where it was. So I wait until I've stitched up to that spot and then I go from there. So we're gonna use our clips again and go all the way around. Look at how nicely that lines up. Keep that there. So that's the flap um, binding right there and it'll line up nicely. I wonder if that was planned <laughs> with the edge of our side opening there. And I don't really clip around here, or around the corners. Hopefully I didn't take that out of the camera there. Um, I just try to work it a little bit around and then put a clip right on this side. And, and then I'm gonna jump down here. And I put a clip on the end so that they don't move this way and then another one coming back there okay and now we'll do the same thing on the other side I clip it up to the curve and right there I shouldn't say clipping as if I'm using a scissor I'm not I am adding a clip to that spot so work it around and then we'll put a clip right here on this side. And then again, we're gonna go down here, put a clip on the end, and then we'll work our way around this way. Okay? There's gonna be a little bit of a, Huh. I'm going to look at that and see where that's going because I don't want to start stitching down here and have that bulk show up on the top and move everything down with it. And we don't want to have any gathering around the edge. So I'm going to move this down a little bit and we'll see if it's right here in the zipper area where it's causing that. I don't know. But we want to make sure that we don't have any gathering right in the corner here. That should be really smooth to go around when we're stitching, okay? So again, I'm gonna put this side, our flat back side, on the sewing machine table, and then we're going to stitch, moving this over all the way around the top. And then we get to bind.
Okay, so we made it through sewing each of the components, putting it all together, adding the binding, and each little side and each little piece does get a little bit thicker than the step before. Um, but I'm really getting a lot more comfortable with the binding and going around curves and finishing things really nicely. And um, hopefully you're experiencing the same thing. The one thing I was really surprised about was how positioning, when you do the final binding at the bottom, how uh, the instructions are to direct the binding that's along each one of the edges here into the sides. So position them inside as you're binding the entire bottom all the way around. So both sides, we're trying to get those really full binding pieces to, to focus in. By doing that, the outside of this case kind of continues to be a rectangle. I was so worried everything was gonna pucker in and it didn't. So I really make sure you follow those steps to push this binding piece here towards the side, not the front, but towards the side, and it finishes this beautifully. So now I have a really, really beautiful cover, and I was thinking it would be fun to make um, a custom size to cover my serger, but I think that'll take a lot of fabric. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm gonna get that done or come up with a different solution for the serger. Um, for now, it'll be my plastic case that goes over the top. So, okay, so that is our undercover sewing machine cover. I did decide though that my next project, which I actually did start last night, is going to be the In Control Caddy. This is a tool caddy, and it's actually shown here with um, some books, a water bottle, more of a fun thing sitting next to your television set or you know living room table or something which is a perfect way to use this in control caddy as well um, but I'm going to use it for tools tools on my uh, sewing machine table cutting table that I can take with me uh, most of the time they end up sitting on my table and I need something to put them in instead of a basket and so this is going to be really really fun so I have already cut out the quilted fabric, I've cut out the coordinate, and I'm gonna start putting that together. So that'll be the next project that you see um, for one of our By Annie patterns and Sobatique quilted fabric. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and show us some images of your sewing machine cover and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.